praise the name of our living God, brethren, and blessed viewers. I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Believing that you have earned a great week and that you are having a wonderful day. And even if you are not having a wonderful day, let your day change in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, I welcome you to Deeper Wells in Jesus' mighty name. And uh, I'm certainly so sure it is going to be glorious and wonderful because of our Lord Jesus Christ. I would like to introduce myself. Uh, today I'm alone. Today, this week has been a wonderful week because Apostle is praying for us and um, our brother is running other errands. And the Lord sent me here today to you. So I'm so confident that today God is going to do something in your life. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you and I bless you because you're good. You are great and you are wonderful. Ancient of days, you are better than the best. You are greater than the greatest. Holy Spirit of the living God, you are our helper. You are the present helper in the time of need. I bless you as we consecrate this program to you. Father, the Bible says we commit our ways unto thee and thou shalt prosper them. I commit the section of today into your mighty hands in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray that your power will visit the viewers all over the world where they are watching us from. Let the power of God touch and transform them by the knowledge that God will use me today to share to them. I bless you and I honor your name. You are good and you are great. I welcome your Holy Spirit in this place. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. My name is Bishop Gabriel Wisdom of Shiloh Worship Ministries. Shiloh Worship Ministries is situated um, along Thicker Road that is in Madhari North. Uh, along a road called Railaudinga Road or Mother of the Road. You are able to get us on, um, on YouTube, on Facebook. On Facebook, you get me as Bishop Gabriel Wisdom. And uh, the same account you find us on, on Facebook and YouTube. Then you find us on a different account called Bishop Wisdom. You're also able to find... Uh, a lot of spiritual nourishment and God bless you. Those who are watching us on JTV live Facebook, uh, we are certainly that God is going to bless you in Jesus' name. Today, uh, we are going to talk about something beautiful. Remember, blessed viewers, last Friday, we looked into the art, the matters of heart, and we saw a lot of things. We saw that the heart is deceitful, and we saw that the heart can be as, uh, as hard as a stone, and we saw that sin is grifted, but God has brought a change. Now the word of God has been grifted into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. And it was really a glorious time. And today we are going now to look at our garments. Remember the Bible says uh, Jesus shared and he said there was a wedding. And in this wedding, the Bible says that... Uh, there are people that were found inside the perimeter of the ceremonial place. I'm coming from a wedding, actually coming here. And uh, these people were not in the garment of the wedding. Uh, they were not in uniform. They looked different. Then the Bible says, it happened that nobody told them to go home until the guest of the day, that is a bride, came. Brian Groom came. And uh, when he came, he was the one who noticed these people. And the Bible says they were cast out. So the Bible says we be ready with our garments clean. The Bible says in the book of Revelation, and I saw people without number 
and I asked, oh, I was asked, what is And I was told, are they that have washed their garments in the blood of the Lamb? So our garments determines a lot. And we are going to see a few things concerning the garments. I am going to open today by reading the book of Zechariah chapter number 3. And I'm going to highlight few things that are reflection of your garment. And before I read, I want you to understand something very beautiful. Uh, everybody is easily to be recognized by the garments he puts on. Number one, our gender can be recognized. It, we recognize one by the, 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 we recognize the gender by checking the garment people are put in. Uh, it is rare occasion whereby you find someone the, wearing other gender garments. So even the differentiation of gender garments are involved. Now, when we come also to professionalism, you, you discover that uh, it, uh, the garments are put by a professional. A chef will not put on the attires or the garment of a soldier or the security officer. The same way neither will he put a military garment in the kitchen. He will put the garments of a chef. So they are garments for the one, the bride of Jesus Christ. And this is what I'm going to talk to us about today. Keeping our garments clean and how to keep them clean. Praise the name of the living God. Where to wash them and how to wash our garments. We are going to look out a garment and also in a garment. Praise the name of the living God. So we have already established that garments define a person. That is why a priest has a garment. A beggar also has a garment. Because the Bible says the, 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 the man left his begging garment. And they ran to Jesus. So they are garment for beggars. They are garment for royal people. The Bible says the rich man that Lazarus stayed at the gate, he put on a royal garment. Praise the name of a living God. Uh, this is so beautiful. This is very beautiful. And he blessed the Holy Spirit. So we are going to look into the garment. And I don't know whether you have put on the garment for the bride of Christ Jesus because church Christ is coming sooner than we expected sooner than we thought when I was growing up as a small child uh, I used to hear that Jesus is coming because I gave my life to Jesus in 1992 when I was only 10 years old of age and I've lived in the Lord for the biggest part of my years I only backslid for four years uh, when I went to high school and, uh, and came back to Jesus in 2002. And every time those days when I was not a preacher, the preacher, you say, Jesus is coming soon. And those years, I used to hear things that I see them in our country. For example, the terrorism. There was no terrorism in Kenya, the biggest part of Africa. I could only hear it in other parts of the world. But I've seen it in our nation. We never thought that one day a day can come and people will not be able to gather in the place of worship and that you have witnessed in this year. So this is to tell us these are the signs of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's where the Lord put this message into my heart. I, I never, when this message was brought to me, I never thought it's going to be the today's message until yesterday. When God laid this responsibility into my hands, the Lord spoke to it this message on Tuesday morning. We were beginning a prayer program and uh, with my disciples. I, I was, the Lord taught me to share with my disciples. And now look, the Lord has brought me to share this message with you viewing me right now, watching me. It means it's a very message of importance. I never sat down to create the message. It was laid in my spirit by the Holy Spirit. And it was confirmed where I sat with my sons. 
They shared the same even before sharing this word. So let us just look into the Bible. And as I read the scriptures, I am going to, to bring to you a lot of things that are, we are going to find in this place. Now, the Bible says in verse number one of Zechariah chapter number three, then he showed me, this is Zechariah being showed. Now, so this is a vision carrier. And then let's go to next. Joshua, the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord. So the content, the seer is Zechariah, but the content is Joshua, who his office, the name of the person is Joshua, his office is a high priest. Praise the Lord. So this is not just anybody, but this is the high priest. And we see an angel standing beside him. And Satan standing at the right hand to oppose him. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Satan also is present. We are going to see why Satan is present in some people's life. Praise the name of the living God. We are going to see why some situations in life uh, of many people which are, are not divinely from God, but are divinely from the forces of darkness, why they are there. Why some people, they are trying to deal with the evil satanic orchestrations and it has not been able to be unrolled. Or they have been trying to come out of an evil satanic coven and they have not been able to experience a total freedom a total deliverance. We are going to see why. It's not that God and is not is not long or is short cannot reach you. Neither the high ears of God are deaf to hear you. But we are going to see the reason behind because we see two presents around this man of God. Huh? Kumbe watu wa Mungu anaweza kuwa na malaika upande wa Mungu na malaika na shetani upande wa kushoto. Depend, this is determined by their state. So verse number two. And the Lord said to Satan. So we see now the Lord God in the matter again. The Lord said to Satan. The Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a brand plucked from fire? Now, God brings another bigger concept and he begins to say, the Lord say, Lord rebuke you, Satan. I, because I'm not going to talk much why Zachariah cannot handle the matter. Remember, Jesus has not died and has not given people higher authority concerning spirit. So they don't have much authority, but I'm not going to handle that today. Maybe one day we shall be able to handle it. Uh, so he says, God, let the Lord rebuke you because God, the Lord who has chosen Jerusalem, is this not a brand picked from fire? Praise the Lord. This is a brand picked from fire, but Satan is standing next to him. That's where you see we have very great, powerful people. But Satan has created a technology in the realm of the spirit to make sure he overpowers these people. And the technology of the enemy is little darkness. Remember the Bible says that he who does not love his neighbor, who says he loves the Lord, who he has not seen, and he cannot love the people he sees. The Bible says he is in darkness until now. And the love of God, the light of God is not with him. So Satan benefits by, by the presence of darkness. So what does the verse 3 say? Let's look at the verse 3 so that you may be able to build a beautiful understanding in the scriptures. Now we see the, the we see now why is the devil in this place? What is the legality that has given the enemy the audacity? What has given the devil the audacity to stand among the chosen? Why what has given the devil the audacity to stand? 
stand against the church. What has given the devil the audacity to oppose you? Today I am going to take you through and by the end of the process, I am certainly sure the angels of God are going to come into your life. The grace of God is going to locate you and by the blood of Jesus Christ, you will be sanctified and the enemy will flee. Remember, one of the greatest ways to deal with enemy, the devil is to resist him. In other words, if these are the things that makes devil dwell with within my parameters, within my atmosphere. These are the things that gives demon big hand over my life. If I don't against myself, I resist them. Then the devil will not need much to be rebuked. He will take off. Hallelujah, church. Hallelujah, child of God. I Praise the Lord. Some people, they have tried to chase Satan. Get out, Satan, get out. Olego Swaya, Oleg, and the devil has not gone and say, Is it the fire not working? Is it that in the name of Jesus not working? No. Let's read verse number three then. The Bible says, Now Joshua was clothed. Joshua was clothed. If you are using your Bible, I suggest you underline it. If you are using your Bible, I encourage you to underline that scripture. The Bible says Joshua was clothed. Joshua was clothed. With what? With filthy garments. Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and was standing before the angel. Joshua was clothed. So what has given the enemy the audacity? What has given the devil the right? What has given the wicked one the right to stand? Praise the Lord. And oppose. Because the enemy is an opposer of brethren. Have you not heard that? The Bible says the enemy, the devil is the opposer of the saints. The enemy is the opposer of the church. A lot of people they are facing a very tough opposition. Their marriage are facing a very tough opposition. Others, their businesses are facing a very tough opposition. Others, people, they are experiencing personal tough opposition. There is no breakthroughs in life. And there is nothing that gives the enemy audacity like dirty. Like sin. Because the only thing that can tinder, that can make our garments feel the, it is sin. Because these are our spiritual garments, not our physical garments. Not the clothes that we buy from the malls. Not the clothes that we get from our tailors. Not the clothes that we get from our nearby vendor. But these are our spiritual garments. The garment of salvation. Praise the Lord. Is your garment clean? The singer sang and said, Are you being to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you roasting the blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless as white as snow? Are you roasting in the blood of the Lamb? Are you roasting in the blood? In the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless as white as snow? Are you roasting in the blood? Of the Lamb. The blood of Jesus is the one that washes us. But we have to commit the blood. They that are not saved, they have not surrendered to Jesus, so they cannot be cleansed by Jesus. They that have not surrendered their life to God, to Jesus Christ, they cannot be washed because a cloth that this cloth I am wearing. It can never be cleansed when I am wearing it. I have to submit it to the cleaners. So for you to be cleansed, you have to submit your life to Jesus. So let's just go to verse number four. And he answered and said, he answered and spoke to the who stood before him saying, take away the filthy garment. What you need to do is to take away. Praise the Lord. Take 
away. Those who are watching on Facebook, God bless you. Those who are watching us on TV, you are on JTV. This is Bishop Gabriel Wisdom of Shiloh Worship Ministries. I'm talking about the government. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory is to, to be. Glory to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Glory to him who died and rose again for us. Glory to him. Praise the Lord. I'm talking about cleaning your garment. I've just brought the concept that showing what that garment is able to do to a life of a person. The many affliction with the saints. The Bible says in Genesis chapter number 1, number 28, verse number 28, and God created man in his own image, and God placed them in the east of the garden of Eden, and he led them to tend the garden. The Bible says every type of a tree, a fruit-bearing tree was in the field, was in the land. Everything good was there. Every good is in Christ. The Bible says that every good gift and a perfect one comes from God, our Lord. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Father of light. Every good gift. So there is every good thing in God. Talk about peace. Talk about joy. Talk about prosperity. Talk about dominion. Every good thing, the Bible says, and every good fruit was available. Everything is available for you. I just want to teach you how to access it and how to maintain it. The other day I was talking to my sons. I always have a mentorship class at night because only people that are of value they will sacrifice their sleep to come to my class. So I teach at night the mysteries. I teach at night mystery. A few times I'll teach during the day mystery because the Bible says that we only teach mystery to mature people. So when you teach mystery to babes, they will not benefit from it. So I taught my sons that one can fast 40 days, collect a lot of spiritual dimensions, then diffuse it. How? By making his garments dirty. What will make his garment dirty? He can gossip, go attend a gossiping meeting for 10 minutes. Then 40 days prayer, better things he has collected, he has received from the spiritual dimension. They are all rendered powerless. Just as the same way Adam in the garden of Eden, everything was at his disposal. The Bible says God fellowship with him every day. This man didn't need to sing worship for God to come. He was in an atmosphere where God used to come. Daily, the atmosphere was created. He never needed drum sets. He never needed the guitars and the pianos and, 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 and the trumpet and the flute. No, Kalabuska. The environment he was living, it was a open heaven. Then the Bible says he ate that which he was taught not to eat. Rebellion. When the whenever you see sin. There is rebellion. And wherever there is rebellion, there is the absence of commitment to love. Praise the Lord. I repeat. Whenever there is sin, there is rebellion. And whenever there is rebellion, there is the absence of commitment and complete knowledge to love. Because when you understand love, you can never sin. Anybody that understands love does not sin. Because the Bible says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. God loved us, that he sent his son. So whenever you love the Lord, there are things you will not do because you love him. Praise the Lord. Because I love the Lord, I will not want to hurt the law. I will not want to go against the law. Now let me bring in to a better metaphor. If I love my wife, I will not do something that will hurt her. Not because if I do it, she will beat me. Not because if I do it, she might know. Mm -mm. 
<laughs> there are people that do things and people never know. Why will they do it? Because they don't understand love. Praise the Lord. So in the Garden of Eden, I'm just trying to bring you to the image of where we are supposed to be. And the importance and the benefit of keeping our garment. Uh, that, because if one will keep his garment clean, praise the Lord, he will be creating an atmosphere for the divine kingdom. For the will of God to be expressed in him. For the Holy Spirit to express himself in him. And when a spirit begins to express itself inside you, the spirit does the best. That is why whenever you see anything happening, whenever you see a drunk person, there is a spirit fight that has found expression inside that man's life. When you see a giver supporting the needy, somebody doing great work that is touching many people, genuinely, there is a spirit expressing himself in that. There is where you find people fornicating, prostituting, is a spirit expressing itself through that person. So when you keep your garment clean, you create an environment for the kingdom of God and for the Holy Spirit. Remember that he says, Holy Spirit. You create an environment for Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will find expression. We will begin to express himself in you. That's what the Bible says when they were gathered in the upper room. The Bible says that the Holy Ghost came. The Holy Spirit came upon them in flames of fire. And Peter was a coward before fear and express itself through Peter. The previous days, just few days, around 53 days before Jesus dies and rise again, before Jesus on the crucifixion day, we see fear expressing itself through Peter. But few days, we see Peter receiving the Holy Ghost. And after receiving the Holy Spirit, there is an explosion, expression. He stands in the gate of the city, Jerusalem, and he says, men and women, we are not drunk. It's only at night. But this is a fulfillment of that which was spoken by prophet Joel that I will pour my spirit upon all men that will flesh and the young men who see vision, hot men who dream dreams. This is a man that they are, what has happened? A spirit has found expression. There is, there, there, there is an explosion of a spirit. The reason why there is poverty in life, the reason why there is sickness in life is because there is a spirit finding expression. Wherever you see an affliction, there is a spirit expression. Pressing himself. And the reason why it has found a ground, the reason why it's expressing itself, it has found an av available ground, a fertile ground. That is why the same disease one might be suffering from. Another person might have the disease, but it will never explode because the space is not available. It has been well contained. It has been well contained contained and in the process of time it is crushed hallelujah i pray and i decree in the name of our lord jesus christ that by the time we finish this service by the time we finish this service here by the time we clear with deep wells you are going to surrender to christ we are going to surrender to him and tell him, oh God, wash me by your blood. Wash my garment. Let me be white as snow. And take over my life, Holy Ghost. Let the kingdom of God, let the heavens find expression in my life. So when he, we see him in the Garden of Eden, Adam, he has everything until sin comes. Don't you know even the same took place in devil's life? In the book of Isaiah chapter number 14, 12 to 14, we say the Bible talks of the enemy, the devil. But that time is not the enemy. It's called the morning star, Lucifer. We say he walked in the cries of fire. He was men of sapphire. Um, powerful stones. He moved to and fro. 
until sin was, until his garment was found dirty. Church, it is time to keep our garments. The bridegroom is at the corner. Our master is at the corner. Jesus is coming sooner than before. And even if he tarries, how are you going to live here under this earth? How are you go- which economy are you functioning under? Hallelujah. Are you functioning under the divine economy as, as a child of promise, as a son in the kingdom? Or are you f- functioning under oppression? Are you a slave or are you a son? Are you struggling in this life? with what is happening around or are you above the remember the bible says you shall be above but not beneath you shall we are supposed if you are a child of god and you have kept your garment clean and you have impacted yourself with the knowledge praise the lord you have impacted yourself with knowledge the knowledge of the word of god because w- Apart from this, that's why we love these deep wells. You should always tune on it in this TV, JTV is powerful television, powerful revelation and shared here. If there's a person I honor and I fear the kind of revelation he has is Apostle Pamela B. She carries a great mantle of revelation. She carries a great mantle. So whenever you turn on JTV, you'll be listening to every staff, a good information for life. Because if you are not limited, you can have clean garment, but you lack knowledge. Praise the Lord. When you lack knowledge is a manifestation, you are still a child. Remember the Bible says, as long as the heir is a child, As long as the heir is a child, is not given inheritance. He does not qualify for inheritance. So he has to wait until he grows. So there are things the Lord dispatches to people as they grow in knowledge. And that is not what I'm talking about. I'm just bringing it to you so that you may understand. So that I don't tell you that you must clean your garment. Then you say, man of God, hallelujah, praise the Lord. I am walking in the path of the ancient of days. I'm celebrating Christ. Then you are limited with knowledge. You cannot access. It is knowledge that gives people access. That's what the Bible says in the book of Hosea, chapter number four, verse number six. My people enter to captivity, are taken to captivity. My people perish. Those are the different versions. The word they use for perish. Some people say they perish. Other versions will say they are taken to captivity. Other may use the word suffer because of lack of knowledge. So lack of knowledge is a great catastrophe that can happen to people. That is why the enemy is cunning. He has created two dimensions in the church. Number one, he has created people with knowledge but no power. Then he went to people with power without knowledge. If you check the church in the globe, you will understand this too. And then there is a real church full of power. And full of the knowledge. There are very few. Very few. Very few. Praise the Lord. Why? Because it is easy to take one dimension. But carrying the two is a sacrificial. So you need to be empowered with knowledge. Then with power. Because Paul says, says, when I came to you, I didn't come with eloquence or speech. But I came with the word full of power and demonstration of the Holy Ghost. So one should be full of knowledge and the same time full of power and the demonstration of the Holy Ghost. This is after you have clear, clean your garment. Because if you have not cleaned your garment, then the power that you carry will remain questionable in the place of authority. I repeat that for somebody to capture it because this may fit for pastors and men of God. By the grace of God, I've preached many years. I know I'm young, but I, I, and I'm not very young. I've preached many years since 1996. I've been preaching since 
1996. And I've committed my life to Christ totally since 2006 to today. I've kept a good track. I've been a pastor for over 14 years as a senior pastor. And I've been the president of our ministry for the last 10 years. So I was here. That if you don't get full of the word and knowledge, you might walk in righteousness like Lazarus. Not just about Zacchaeus. The man, the man who sat by the rich man's gate. Lazarus. This man only focused on righteousness. He didn't want to know more knowledge. And because of the lack of we looking to know more knowledge, he missed it. I want you as you walk in righteousness, because I'm just in that area. I'm not done with Adam in Garden of Eden and that what is available for him. Everything was available for Adam. Everything was available for him and the wife. But Satan came in. He brought rebellion. How do you know you're operating with rebellion? Everything that you are doing and you are a sincere child of God and what you are not doing, you are arguing. But we shall look into that as I finish because that's my finishing part. Let me just move to my second part of this scripture. So the Bible says, he, he say, answered and says, he spoke to those who stood before him saying, take away the filthy garment. I want to put this that's my point number two, because you have understood now, number one, that why these things are happening. So you need to identify the dirt in your life. That what has meant your garment filthy. What that is upon you. One day I was doing ministry and then uh, somebody met my, and I was wearing white attire. Then somebody meant my trouser dirty at the foot part. And everybody could see the dirty. Because I was wearing a white garment. Praise the Lord. So, we have seen that. And we have seen that the enemy is within your parameters. The thing that is giving him the audacity, the license to, 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 to oppress, to massage your life with afflictions, to oppress your life, is because of sin. That, that is in your life. So number two, Shakoskapa Likombrakata Zelombrokoski Pando Bagada. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, my Lord. So number two is that you have to give yourself. Because he said, take away. You know, we can never attain righteousness by human effort. That is where some people are not be able to attain it. We only attain righteousness. We only attain cleanness by surrendering to him. So he says, take away the filthy garment from him. To him, he said, see, I have removed your iniquity from you and I will clothe you with rich robe. Let the filthy garment be surrendered to Christ for cleaning. Because some of you are saved. Those who are not saved, surrender to Christ. He removes your garment of sin and put upon you the garment of righteousness. Those who, are, those, those who have not received Jesus. But now to those who are in Christ, what do we do? Man of God, I'm saved. Now this is what you do. You do washing. Praise the Lord. You wash, you wash, you go for washing. Dirty is in levels. Dirty is in levels. There is a dirty that you can handle, and there are dirty that you cannot handle yourself. You will need someone to be involved. I want to bring the two categories. The one you can handle and the one you cannot handle. There are sins that if the Bible says in the book of 1 John, Chapter 1, I believe verse number 9. Let me just read for you. <clears throat> First John, chapter 1, verse number 9. Can I, let me begin a little bit higher so that it may be of great help. Mm. 
Verse 8. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and truth is not in us. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But it is good to understand there is unrighteousness and transgressions. It's good to understand this. There is unrighteousness, there is transgression, and there are iniquities. So I will not go to this that big bracket because I don't have that much time. But now, when you have there are those things, when you go to God, you you will be easily to be forgiven, and every sin is easily to be forgiven. Remember, but there is a sin that you cannot be forgiven if you grieve the Holy Spirit, if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit when you. Speak against the Holy Spirit when you grieve the Holy Spirit. Now, that is cannot be answered. And I pray you don't go to that capacity whereby you will tear down your garment of salvation. Because the Bible talks about it in the book of Revelation. He says these people, their, their names will be removed from the book of life. They that grieve the Holy Spirit, their names will be removed from the book of life. But there are sins you do them, your name is not removed. You are just a backslider. You are just gone back to that. And when you live this life of coming from righteousness to darkness to dirty like that, what God does, he does not put things of value in your life. That is where the Bible says, do not put a golden ring on a pig's nostril. In other words, anybody that lives a life of a pig, there are Christians living like that. You sin Monday, you repent evening. You sin Tuesday, you repent Wednesday. Like that. I've, I've heard stories that really shocked me. Uh, one day, a lady came to my office. And she wanted me to pray for them. On a certain matter. But uh, I, I said I cannot pray for that matter because according to the word of God does not allow me to pray for such a case. And in the process of time, she made a statement and said this, that people can sin as long as it's not over the weekend. Hear that statement. People can sin as long as it's not over the weekend. Why? Because they are looking to go to church on Sunday. But these, remember, that is honoring Sabbath the day. But we are no longer living on Sabbath day. We are living in Christ, who is the Sabbath. So every day is the day of the Lord. Today is the day of the Lord. Tomorrow is the day of the Lord. The day after tomorrow is the day of the Lord. Because the Bible says nobody knows the hour, neither the day. So every day we ought to live waiting for our Lord Jesus Christ. So when you have discover you have been dirty, you have dirty that is not blood and is not oil. You can have that dirty amatope and those other kind of dirt, but not blood and not oil. I will handle those three things. That ya no more uchafu wa kawaida. Unaweza kwenda mbele za Bwana, umwambie Bwana akusamee, umamlilie Mungu na utaoshwa kwa sababu Biblia inasema a broken heart that is what we saw the last Friday and the contrary spirit that one he will not forsake. But now there are people that are dirty with blood. They are dirty with blood. Where is the dirty of the blood coming from? Those who have killed. Those who have committed abortion. Those who kill no more and those who kill by aborting. And abortion is worse than killing because anybody who aborts kills a family member. So it is more dangerous. Actually, if you are not careful, you will become a satanic assassinator in the realm of the spirit. That is where those people who have aborted, uh, in my experiences, 
uh, have discovered that they are, they are likely to be recruited by the forces of darkness to become workers in the evil kingdom. At night, they will be carried by forces of darkness to different dimensions to do different evil activities. Reason because the day they aborted, they opened a door and they entered in the book of register of murderers. Now, when you have done this kind of an offense, you have to go to a priest, to a servant of God, who have been given the ministry of reconciliation. The Bible says in the book of Corinthians, I think it's verse Corinthians, let me read for you. First Corinthians chapter 5, uh, verse number 20. Let me check first. Because the sec second says we are ambassadors. Let me just confirm you the scripture location. Shaka uh, proska palagadus. That should be then. Um, first, Second Corinthians chapter five. We read from verse number seventeen. The Bible says we are being called to twenty. We are being called to the ministry of reconciliation. So we are reconciling man to God. So in such a case, you have to go to a priest. Because you cannot clean your garment alone from this. Because you have lost the in connection with God. Let me just take you to James chapter 5 verse number 16. I read it for you for deeper understanding. If I don't read some scriptures, uh, some of you might not be able to conga with me. But I want it to be recorded in your spirit and, uh, and the correct procedure. I have been a preacher, as I told you, for a longer time. And by the grace of God, there is something I've seen. People that are com have seen, they have committed this kind of transgression and iniquities. They never experience a total infilling of the Holy Spirit. They never experience a complete liberty, even after coming to Christ, until they confess. So the Bible says in the book of James chapter 5, verse number 16, the Bible says, Confess your transgression to one another, not your sins, your transgressions to one another. And pray for one another that you, are, that you may be healed. The effect, the effective, the effective, vervent prayer of a righteous man, prevailed man. So there are sins that affect your prayer life. So I've talked of two. No more that. You, you said a lie. You collected a bribe. You gave a bribe. You insulted somebody. You slapped somebody. You enervated someone's property. This generally, you have made, you have become dirty. Go to Christ. Confess your sin. You will be forgiven. Then if you have that of blood, you have transgressed, go to a priest. And we saw that on Friday, last Friday here. We saw that you get a teaching priest. Because when you go to him, he's able to understand that you're a person that has come to you so that you can reconcile you have gone to him so that he can pray on your behalf the bible says when the friends of job began to look for reconciliation to god god said unto them take a sheep take a bulls and take th that bull to job don't come to don't pray to me i will not hear your prayer go to job let him pray for you i will hear him but you i will not hear what what? Yes. Read your Bible. God taught the friends of Job, don't pray. God spoke to them, but told them, don't pray. God can speak to you, but not respond to your prayer. He can give you a direction on how the ways of functionality. And I think we looked at this when we were looking the, 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 the deep wells, when you are looking about the, the giftings of the servant, the gift of the priest, the gift of the servants of God that God has given us. We saw their gift to us. So you go, when you have that of blood, you committed a murder. You went to jail. You came out. You served your term according to the rules of the land. But you have not settled it in your heart. Go to a priest so that he can pray for you. Praise the Lord. 
Hallelujah. We see Bible full of people praying for others. So you confess. You cannot be praying for what you have not confessed. You have done abortion. Nobody was there. The in you chafu ya damu. You chafu yesu ka joshua. Mana mali popote ndamu ina muagwa ina itisha revenge. Adam, not Adam, but Cain, he never knew God as a judge. He only knew God in the office of a father. Cain, he didn't understand the functionalities, the offices of God. God is a father and he has a mercy seat and he has a judgment seat. So when the blood began to cry from the ground, there was no priest for Cain. That is why God came to Cain before he committed the transgression and said unto Cain in the book of first, in the book of Genesis chapter 4, chapter 4, verse number 10. If you do well, will you not be accepted? Sin is waiting you at the door. See to it, you overcome it. Because if you don't overcome it, there is no reconciliator. There were only two of them and their father. And he did it. So when God says the blood of your brother is crying judgment, whenever anybody pours blood, the blood begins to demand judgment to be avenged. So when you go to prayer, there is another voice. That is why your prayer are not be here because there is a blood in your garment. Have you not read the Bible? And the Bible says God, David wanted to build God the house. And God said to David, your hands are full of blood. Praise the name of the living. I'm talking about cleaning our garment. We clean our garment and then we clean ourselves. And we begin to wash ourselves from the head. Going downward. We finish with our feet. We don't begin by our feet. Then we clean our head. If we wash our feet first and then use that water, our feet are full of dust. We cannot use that water to wash our head. So you must begin to clean yourself from mind. You are thought, hallelujah. You are thought. You will begin to be transformed by the knowledge of your God, the word of God in your mind. That you may know the perfect will of God. This perfect will of God will begin to order your step. Remember the Bible says it is not given to man to order a steps. And the Bible says the steps of a righteous man are ordered by God. So when you clean your garment, you, be, you begin with your head down to your shoes. That is when you can go to serve Jesus. You cannot go to ministry when you have not cleaned your head. If you don't clean your head, you are going to bring confusion into the kingdom. You are not ready for the gospel. So we enter the kind number two of that to clean. Praise the Lord. And on this, it is important I say this. That uh, I, I, I will take a break so that I may come back to share this. We'll take a break in two minutes. We're going to take a break and uh, we will come back. My name is Bishop Gabriel Wisdom. You are on deeper wells. You are on deeper wells. We'll be. JTV, your number one Christian channel.
Kwa jina angu naituwa la kakoshi. Kwa jina ingine anaituwa la masho. Kwa jibini nae kuja ya salima. Ye jibini hivyo kwa angani ya JTC. Na kasama hiyo TV mfuri. Hiko nena la mungu. Hiko na mayimbali. Hapa sisi inapata na mbamu. Kwa JTC na wapenda yote. The natural Salima now showing on your number one Christian channel, JTV. I want to thank God. 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 Now, Rasha, do you know what you're doing? No. Yes. Do you know what you're doing? Yes. Do you know what you're doing? Yes. Do you know what you're doing? Yes. Yes. You're very smart and excellent. Abuju, abuju. Abuju, what is Nini nak letak apa? Kau nak fikir apa tu? Kau ambil nak apa? Belajar di sana. Kau nak mana Nino? Ia ni ambil Nino. Kau cuma nak sama Nino. Mhm. Nenek saya ni nyasi yang mula kata apa? Full of drama, full of teaching, and full of comedy. This time round, it is one like never. Before, from 8 p.m. to 8:30 p.m. Don't miss. shall be given unto you. This is the place where I come. Naika uh, Facebook yangu kando, naika WhatsApp kando, naika Instagram kando. This place has been built by the labors of intercessors. Wow, um, uh, it's a blessing to be on this uh, JTV. Very welcome. I'm in this very beautiful environment. This is uh, a prayer center, Kisaju prayer center. And uh, it's somewhere in Kajado, in Kisaju. And it's a place, a great blessing to be here. My name's uh, Pamela B. God is environmental, people of God. God is very environmental. God dwells in environments. He looks at the environment of your heart. He looks at the environment of your life. He looks at you as an environment whether he can dwell in. And so even places, God dwells in places. And uh, we thank God because he is here. And it's an easier place to pray. It's an easier place to really talk with him. And... It's a great honor and a great blessing even to be sharing with you this uh, at this moment. Naitwa Felix Leseni, kwa wale wananijua. Ah, kwa wale wanijui, bado that's my name, Felix Leseni. I'm born again. I love Christ, he's mine and personal savior. I'm a gospel minister, I minister through music, na pia nafanya wakia God. Today I just want to uh, talk as to talk about something very very unique. Yeah? So nataka niwaambie kitu moja ma uh, vijana ama youth uh, those who are watching right now. I just want to reveal to you a secret, a place, yani pahali pasiri, pali ambapo unakujua natafuta God. So, this is the place where I come, naika Facebook yangu kando, naika WhatsApp kando, naika Instagram kando, naika usani kando, na kachini na meditate, na sikiza wadi ya God, na sikiza ile kitu God anasema kwa life yangu, na pia, indio place imetulia, miu kama hapa hivi, I talk to God, 
eh, na meditate toward your god i talk to god na mwambie ile kitu nataka kwa life yangu na mwambie vile atarun life yangu na pia niwaambie kitu moja uh, this place ni a prayer center a uh, juda prophetic uh, prayer center iko kisaju so hapa ndio mimi come na tafuta god i tell god what i want him to do with my life and also hapa ndio life yangu mimi we make so kama kijana what do i want to tell you in short wanasema vunja mifupa kama bado meno iko lakini mimi nakwambia kitu moja tafuta mungu kama ungali kijana au sio god bless you and always always remember to put god first in everything to put prayers first in everything you do god bless you Haleluya. Ujambo uh, mtazamaji naitwa Pastor Wickliff Nongesa. Nashukuru Mungu kwa sababu yako. Kwa hivyo nataka kusema tu kidogo kuhusu maombi, maana mahali ambapo niko ni maeneo ya maombi na maombi ni jambo nzuri sana ambapo uh, watoto wanahitajika kuomba, vijana wanahitajika kuomba, uh, wamama wanahitajika kuomba na wazee wanahitajika kuomba. Ukisoma kitabu cha Injili ya Luka uh, 11 mstari wa tisa inasema ask and it shall be given unto you ni nini hiyo unataka kuuliza Mungu kwa Kiswahili inasema omba lakini Kiingereza inasema ask ni nini hicho unataka kuuliza Mungu kwa sababu kila utamuuliza Mungu ndicho atakachokuwa anakutendea Mungu maombi ni kuongea na Mungu kwa hivyo maeneo ambayo niko ni prayer sender kwa hivyo wakati unaenda unaongea na Mungu unapata kwamba hata unapoongea na Mungu pamoja na uh, kando na mambo ambayo ni ya asili unapata kwamba Yesu alipokuwa kiomba sura yake ikangaa eh Mais, yani akabadilika na wanafunzi wakaelewa wakaweza kuona abebadilika na katika kule kubadilika utukufu wa Bwana ukamfunika na hapo eh, nabii Elijah na nabii Musa wakamtokea kwa hivyo katika maneno ya maombi unatarajia mambo mengi wakati unaenda kuomba unakutana na Mungu na mambo yako yanabadilika kwa hivyo uh, mali hapa kuna kuja watu wa aina yote wanakuja kumuomba Mungu wanakuja kuongea na Mungu sana sana just to talk to God Unakuja unapata maeneo mazuri ya kukaa na kutafakari wema wa Bwana na kumsikia Mungu uh, kila ambacho anasema katika maisha yako. Kwa hivyo ninakutia moyo uh, mpenzi uh, mtazamaji popote ambapo ulipo ni vizuri kuomba ni vizuri kutafuta nafasi ya kuweza kuongea na Mungu. Kwa hivyo Mungu akubariki sana unapoazimia kuingia katika maombi. Na Mungu akubariki sana. JTV your number one Christian channel Yes praise the name of the living God brethren bless and be the Lord God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ Welcome back welcome back welcome back welcome back we are here at JTV Praise the Lord uh, it is hot it is wonderful it is powerful the grace of God is raining I'm talking about we are looking to cleaning our garment. And those who are just joining welcome in Jesus name. We have just established that number 1. Uh, no matter the office you are in, if one is not careful, his garments can be dirty. Number 1. And we saw that whenever they are dirty, the enemy is likely to come closer to you. He will be attracted by the dirt. And that is going to affect your journey of faith. It's going to affect your life. We have seen how it affected the life of Adam and Eve. How their life became impossible. How their life were really oppressed by the evil one. So um, that's what we have learned today. And we, are we have looked now to two things. We have looked three kind of major types of sin that make people dirty. And we have seen that they are just, number one, the normal dirty, normal dirt that people contract with. There is a normal dirt that people contract with, which is normal, uh, uh, is normal but should not cause one to miss should not cause one to miss eternal life because if you stay that you are not ready for the bride you are not ready for the bride of our lord jesus christ you are not waiting for jesus christ 
So when he comes and you are dirty, you are going to be left here. Number two, you don't have dominion for spiritual exercise, for kingdom exercise. You don't have dominion because enemy is ruling your life. And we saw that the reason why the devil is able to massage the destinies of many people, to make the lives of many people impossible. It is simply because he has, the enemy has, the devil has, as a legal right within their parameters by the reason of dirty garments. Praise the Lord. And I want to bring something before I continue to the, to the part that I wanted to deal with, uh, that we, we have seen that in this matter, in this contest, in this phase, we have seen that there are those sins that you can repent and you are good to go. Your case is handled. You can deal with the matter. And we say that is the normal sins. But we are saying there are two types of sin you cannot handle because the relationship with God is broken. Remember there is a scripture that says that we pray for people that sin but not the one that sin unto death. If you sin unto death, you will need uh, to be brought back to life. That's where God has called us to bring back the dead. The dead back to life. There are people that are walking their dead. They used to be alive in Christ. Then they committed the sin that killed them. And we have seen that is the dirty of the blood in the garment. There is a dirty of blood in the garment. And we have, the other thing, thing we have seen is the dirt of the oil. And we have seen the dirt of the blood is whereby the blood of people are involved. You are involved with the blood of people. Praise the Lord. For instance, where somebody kills another person. For instance, where somebody is involved in, in abortion. Whether you finance it or you are the one doing it yourself. These affect the person's life. These affect the individual's life. And we have, I have told you that with experience. One time I was ministering in a, in, a, in a place. I do healing school meetings. I was doing a healing school meeting in Trukana. Then a woman comes to me for prayer. She had a very long term problem. And when I'm praying to her by the help of the Holy Spirit. Her, the Lord tells me to ask her if she has ever aborted. And she says yes. Then I say, your case is different. I've seen a couple number of people. These people, they cannot have the abundance of God in their life. They have really been prayed for. They have never received the Holy Spirit. Because he is holy. The Spirit of God is holy. The Spirit of God is holy. The Holy Spirit does not stay anywhere. He stays in a holy place. If you have that in mind, if you have, you have not washed your garment of salvation, the Holy Spirit will not live in you. So this, this, that lady after praying for her, I began to see her life change. Others have not been able to recover from that act. And I know some people you are watching me, and you have been wondering what is the problem of your life. You have been saved for so long. People have prayed for you. You have never experienced God. Go to a priest. Look for a priest. Look for a man of God. I've read to you James chapter number 1, chapter 5, verse number 16. That confess your transgression to one another. Confess your transgression to what that you may be healed. There are people's life has not been healed. Your marriage has never been healed. Your destiny has never been healed. I saw a man. He was a good believer. They were having great life. And then uh, the wife went outside the marriage. He fornicated. After fornicating, she became pregnant. Uh, because she was out of the marriage. She had to get rid of the, what con was conceived. Then she came back to the marriage. And the man was having a great life. He was having wonderful businesses. The man began to collapse. And everything went down. The businesses died. I told you Adam was chased from the garden of Eden. And an angel was set on that garden to guard it that Adam should not be seen anywhere near. That's why some people, you cannot find any great thing in your life. And you are in church. Praise the name of the living God. There are matters that you are able to handle. There are matters that I say, God has called his servants. I've read to you. Second Corinthians chapter 
5, you start from 17. And I've told you that God has called a servant. We have been called into a ministry of reconciliation. Whenever you see a reconciliator, the reconciliator, there are two parties that are not in agreement. That's where Jesus came to restore us to God. And when he was leaving, he said, as my father sent me, so I send you. The same message that Jesus will be sent to bring to the world is the same message that we are bringing to you to reconcile you to Christ. That is why you go to a man to reconcile you because you have committed a sin that leads you unto death. You have killed. There is a blood demanding revenge. There is a voice whenever you appear in the realm of the spirit, a blood appears with you claiming revenge. Praise the name. So I've said in such a matter, you go to your pastor and open the matter to your pastor. Tell your pastor, these are the things that have been involved in my life. By the grace of God, I received the wisdom that I can be helped. And I have come that you may pray for me. You, you reconcile, you talk to God on my behalf. The Bible says, and the children of Israel went to Samuel. And the book of 1 Corinthians chapter, 1 Samuel chapter number 7, from verse number 7, downward. And they said, and stop, don't stop. Stop. Don't fail to cry before the Lord for us. There are people that cry before God for others. The children of Israel were suffering in Babylon until Daniel began to cry to God. And because someone was available for prayer... They were out of Babylon. Even before the 70 years are fulfilled, they were there one year earlier. Because there was an, an intercessor, there was a reconciliator. Have you not read the Bible in the book of Job chapter number uh, 33, 16, 17, 18? The Bible says, if there be a reconciliator, if there be a messenger, this person will be saved. The good thing that when you go to a priest, even if you cut someone's head before you came to Christ, or oh, when you're a believer, you did things that are terrible. The, the, that, that is, a, is, a, is, a, is a, within the parameters of a pastor. He's able to pray for you. He's able to speak to God to you on your behalf and take you back to God. Praise the name of the living God. So if you have blood in your garment, if there is blood in your garment, praise the Lord. I said dust, mud, you can go to the river and be cleaned. You can go yourself and say, the, I've read you the Bible in the book of First John chapter 1 verse number 9. The Bible says, if you confess, you forgive us. So you can go to him and pray and the Lord will hear. But now in this matter, you need the reconciliator where there is blood. Those who have done abortion, those who have killed, those who have done things that their blood is not. Number two, three types of sin, the types of dirt that you cannot wash yourself. Where there is oil. Where there is oil. There are people that have interacted with oil and they became dirty in the process. The Bible says, I want you to capture this very correctly because I'm talking about cleaning your garment. Because when your garments are clean, you are going to experience God. And you are go when the bridegroom comes, you are going to be ready. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah, church. We saw that the bridegroom is coming sooner. Bwana Arusi anakuja. Bwana Yesu anakuja. Jesus is coming sooner than said, than we expected, than people talked of. And when he appears, those who are dirty, they are going to be left here. And I told you the Bible said Jesus gave a parable and he said there was a wedding. And then the, some people crashed in. And there are a lot of people that are crushed in because Jesus said in the book of John 10.10 10, that there are those who came by the window. They didn't come by the door. They came by the window. We see them in the kingdom, but we are not able to understand them. And those are the people that Solomon spoke of. He said, I don't understand the way of a snake in a rock. He's a snake, but he's in the church. And we saw this on the last Friday. There are people with the 
stone out of stone. They, they, they cannot change. They need to act to be removed and they be placed a new heart. And we saw these things in the church because Apostle read a very interesting scripture. And in that scripture, the Bible says that uh, the, 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 the sins are encrypted in the arms of the altar. Praise the name of the living God. So we are looking now to those who have been dirty by oil. And how to clean oil. I've told you how to clean no more that. I've told you how to clean oil, no, uh, blood in your garment. Now, how do you clean oil? Praise the Lord. You go to the oil, to those with the oil. How do you get that with oil, number one? is by having an event. Let me give you scriptural reference so that it may be clear to you. The Bible says that when Moses went out and he married a, 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 a lady that was not an Israelite, and uh, it was known to the sister and Aaron. Aaron was a priest. Aaron was a priest. He was having effort on himself. But Miriam was not a priest. So there was no oil on the head of Miriam. But on the head of Aaron, there was oil. And these two, they were involved in one exercise. They spoke against Moses. Then the Bible says, the Lord came and said, Moses, I speak with him face to face. And God gave the testimony of Moses. And the Bible says, Miriam turned reprosal. It became white as snow because of leprosy. But we don't see Aaron in the same case. If you are a scholar, if you are a reader of the Bible, you discover later is when the Lord tells Moses to go tell Aaron to remove his effort to remove the garment of priesthood so that he can die. Let me tell you, if you keep your garments clean, you cannot die. They cannot find death in your life. They can never be dead in your marriage. They can never be dead in your spiritual life. They can never be dead in your business. If you keep your their garment of salvation clean, the devil cannot succeed to attack any dimension unless you lack knowledge. I talked about knowledge. Praise the Lord. Are we together, brethren? So Aaron and Miriam, both of them, they commit the same mistake. They speak against the oil. So they are dirty. Miriam becomes dirty by speaking against Moses. And we see in the process of time, she is leprous. Leprosy catches her up. And she is sick. And Moses begins to cry to God for Miriam. Praise the name of the living God. I want to talk about this because many people, they have this dirt. And it is affecting their life very much. They have a disease that they cannot recover. You just, praise the Lord, you end things with the man of God. Because you didn't like, I didn't say the man of God did good. I didn't say that the man of God was right. But he is a man of God. The Bible says, touch not the anointed one. Touch not. He didn't say, when the anointed one sins touch him, say, touch not. Remember the Bible says, you know, I've seen this across the globe. People are very quick to speak against the anointed. They are very quick to judge the anointed. They never know they make their garments of salvation dirty. And there are things they do not qualify. There are things that they cannot benefit in the spiritual realms anymore. Because everything you see, every dimension you see here, God has given to man. Remember, for God to set the children of Israel free, he had to bring Moses. And Moses had an issue in Egypt and murdered a person. Praise the Lord. Moses and killed a, a guy in Egypt and actually was out of, he was a fugitive. And we saw that the other Friday here. We saw that. We covered that with Apostle Pamela and Pastor Levis Younger. 
It was a very powerful, powerful. You can just wait one day for the repeat or go to the YouTube. They are there. Just you can just type JTV. Then you are able to 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 to, to find that 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 that, that, that someone is on JTV YouTube. Uh, <clears throat> you can also subscribe to JTV YouTube. Subscribe to JTV YouTube. Become a a follower. Hit the bell that you can be notified whenever they are on air, and it is going to be a blessing. So Moses is a fugitive. Moses has run. He comes back. He sets them free. So the Bible says this grace has been deposited on a weak vessels, on, on um, um, vessels of clay, mortal. So it is a great treasure, but the place where they have been deposited. Praise the name of the Lord. So some people begin to address the container. And in the process, they get dirty because they don't understand. The container has oil. The oil is not poured on them. The oil is poured on their garment and begin to affect them. Because they have another dirt with them. Because for you to speak against the man of God, you are gossiping. And now, because of this, a lot of people like begin to go down the scale. They begin to be having kind of affection, effect in their life. And we see Miriam with leprosy. And it takes Moses for Miriam to recover. We see Absalom running after the anointed man called David. And it, 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 David tells his, his men, do not slay the man. Leave the man. But the Bible, the guy is caught. That's where the tragedy is happening to, happening to believers. This matter much I'm addressing believers. There are matters happening to believers. They just found people speaking again as an anointed man of God. And they joined and began to speak without even following. With them without wanting to know who is the person. They just conclude and come up with a statement. Then you become guilty of touching the anointed. You don't touch them. You leave them. They are the servants of God. And the Bible says to his hand, they stand or they fall. Every servant will stand in the hands of his master or in the hands of his master he will fall it is not our responsibility to judge other people's servants praise the name of a living god so miriam goes to moses and moses pleads god for miriam now we see another very interesting scenario a man runs from the battle from ramoth Gleath. Where Saul fell. And he comes to David and he said unto David, Let it be done to your enemies. It is have happened today. And then he says, What is it? He says, uh, Saul is dead. He said, How do you know he died? He said, I slew my sword. Ah! And David says, You have accused yourself with your own mouth. How did you slay the anointed man of God? Don't you, if you read your Bible, don't you know that many occasions, many occasions, God laid Saul in the hands of David. But David said, I cannot touch the anointed. The Bible says one day he cut the garment of Saul and he went up to the mountain and the other day he carried the sword. There are many people you have carried the sword of your pastor. Your pastor is not working with revelation now because of the kind of pressure and stress that you have planted in him by the gossip, by the attack you have channeled because he made a statement that you didn't like. I'm talking about keeping our garment clear. Praise the name of a living God. Hallelujah. So twice David is sorry. But when he takes the sword, he, he puts it on Abiada and his fellow Abana. They are responsible for guarding the sword. And then the other day, he cut the hand, he's sorry. So these were opportunities given for him to kill. But he refused to kill the anointed. 
He refused because he cannot touch the anointed of God. He, 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 he is going to be guilty. He is going to make his garment dirty. You remember God uses his anointed ear. Every great thing you hear, every great healing you will hear, there is an anointed man who will be connected to that. There is a vessel that God used to fat testimony. Church, brethren, praise the name of the Lord. So you clean yourself by going to the man who oh, you, you touched. This cleans you. This makes you clean. This brings you to a place of sanctification. This brings you to a place <clears throat> whereby you are healed. Whereby you are healed. Because these trespasses, they bring affliction. They bring sicknesses to your soul. They affect your life. They affect your life. With or without your knowledge. Some people, they never know what is eating them. That's why I said many people, as I began to teach today, they, don't under, they cannot pinpoint what really has happened to their life. I've seen people that have told me, man of God, many people have prayed for me and have not been helped. And then at some I begin to ask them questions. And in the process of questioning them is whereby we come to find their problem. Praise the name of the living God. Look at Eve. Miriam could have fled from the camp. She would have remained reprocious all her life. She had to go to Moses. And Moses pleads to God. And she is cleansed. You can be cleansed from the, from the guilty of touching the anointed. I, I want to come to the summing part. I've told you how to clean. There are dirty you clean yourself. There are those where you take yourself to be cleaned by others. You can clean yourself or you go to be cleaned. If you are a mature person, the one who is cleaning you, he will not clean you in the presence of children. He will clean you in private. He will clean you in private. One of the challenges that I've seen is big people be cleaned on public on Sunday morning. It affects people. Mature people, it is done in private. They are cleaned in private. I want to handle the last concept, the last part, and we are going to call it a day. And the last part of this endeavor, uh, of this uh, process, of this uh, today's deeper wells, I am going to talk about now so that you may be able to bring a total experience of freedom. You have to guard yourself. You have to keep yourself so that you don't keep getting dirty. Praise the name of the living God. And when you keep yourself, the enemy, the devil, if you are able to keep yourself, the enemy will not succeed against you. Praise the name of the living God. If you are able to keep yourself, the enemy will not be able to reach you. And I'm going to read the book of John chapter 14, verse number 13. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm bringing a conclusion so that you may understand how do I stay clean? I don't keep, I don't stay becoming dirty. How do I succeed to live clean? I don't live becoming dirty. How do I sustain? John 14.30, the Bible says, I want you to understand something. If you, do, if you keep your garments clean, the devil will never attack you. John 14.30, the Bible says, say John 14.30, Let's just do that in two. Just do that in two. Let's just do that in two. The Bible says that in two. And supper being ended, the devil having already put it in the heart of Judas, Iscariot Simeon, 
to betray him. Do not allow the enemy, Satan, to put things in your heart. Guard yourself. How do you succeed to guard yourself? You guard your mind. We talked about that on last Friday. But I want to take you to a very powerful scripture. Because I said that I'll bring it on my conclusion. I'll bring it on my conclusion. Uh, first Corinthians. Is it first or second? Jesus, you're good. Oh. You are very, very good, Holy Spirit. I think it's Second Corinthians. Thank you, Jesus. Now this was second. Where is my Bible? <coughs> Sorry. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 3. The Bible says, For we walk not in the flesh. For we walk in the flesh. We do not war according to the flesh. We walk, I'm bringing the picture of keeping yourself clean now. Keeping your garment clean. Because people have argued that you cannot stay clean. You can't. The Bible says our God is holy and he has called us to righteousness. And the Bible says, I am holy, be ye holy too. God has called us to excellence of righteousness. Praise the Lord. So for you to be able, you cannot attain it according to flesh. You must surrender to Christ. And he gives you divine enablement. He empowers you to stay clean. The Bible, for we, our weapons of warfare are not carnal. The weapons to use to keep your garments clean is not carnal. In the book of Romans, Paul says, whatever I want to do, I don't do. And whatever I, want to, I, I don't want to do, I do. And that which I do and I don't want to do, I've discovered is a flesh. So, if you use human ability, you try to be, live fighting with energy. You hold your eyes not to see people that you... you, you put your ears, you might not succeed. But, let's just continue. We have just established that the weapons for this technology are not canon. The weapons for keeping your garment clean are not canon. I've seen people that wear white garments. Very good. But, are you wearing, in, are you clean inside? Because carnality is enmity is en, is enemy to godliness. Our God cannot be performed carnally. This mortal, this physical body cannot comprehend God. Because God is not a flesh. God became a man, but he is not a man. So you cannot know God like a man. You have to learn God spiritually. Praise the Lord. I'm in my conclusion part. God is not learned in theological school. God is learned, is taught by the Holy Spirit. God is not taught by a professor. One cannot be taught God by the Holy Spirit. For the Bible says, when he, the Holy Spirit, comes, he will teach you all truth. When he, the Holy Spirit, comes, he will teach you all truth. So, we have not been given any other teacher than the Holy Spirit. We all teach. We teach what we have been taught by our professor, the Holy Spirit. By our teacher, the Holy Spirit. That's what we teach. So our weapons of warfare are not carnal. You cannot sustain this by carnality. You cannot say, I'm, I'm wearing white garment. By putting on a very good white, it is very beautiful and smart. But that is not what you say, I am clean. We are only men clean by the word of God, number one. When the word of God begins to dawn on you, to enter you, that's where the Bible says, 
abide in the word, abiding in his word. When you begin to abide, the abiding begin to direct your step. Remember I said it is not given to man to order his steps. So when you surrender to the Holy Spirit and you abide in the word, the word begin to lead you. Remember the Bible says in the book of Joshua chapter 1 verse number 8. And this book of law shall not depart from thy mouth. Thou shalt meditate upon it then. That you may do according to that written in there. Doing according to that written in there. Is because we have committed ourselves to meditating that word. It has taken over. We have received a transfiguration by the word. We have received according by the word of God. And by that code is how we walk. We do not walk according to the desires of flesh. We don't walk according to our passions. We don't walk according to the idea of the world. We don't walk according to the fashions of this world. But we walk according to the word of God. Praise the Lord. So our feet are laid. Remember the Bible says we commit our ways unto the Lord. And he shall prosper. So our weapons of warfare with that are not canon. But the Bible says they are mighty in God for pulling. They are mighty in God for, not to, but for. Pulling down strongholds. Strongholds are meant, they are things that are made to bring people to captivity. Uh, 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 strongholds, most of the time you find them, they synchronize themselves into culture customs and traditions and wherever you see cultures traditions many in many areas you will find that the rulers of darkness they operate by that dimension so that they can create a law so that the powers of darkness and principality can find the order of operation and way of functioning against a person because the Bible says that we went not against flesh and blood, but we went against principalities. A prince is the one who is waiting and looking for a place for dominion. Is a person that has not dominated yet is looking for a place. So when a prince finds a place, he looks for a power to empower him. Then they look for rulers of darkness to create a law to govern that territory. Praise the name. But now this thing we Pull them down. Hallelujah. Verse number five. Casting down arguments. Most of sins that I've seen in the body of Christ today, there are a lot of arguments whether they are sin or not. The devil will bring into your mind a state. It's like it's okay. It's like it's not okay. It's like it's okay. It is a sin. It is not a sin. Until people begin to ask, is it a sin to marry an unbeliever? Why? Because it is a stronghold. You are beginning to depend on the normal knowledge. You have not surrendered completely to the Holy Spirit. You have not surrendered your desires to Christ. When you surrender, it is no longer I who lives, but Christ in you. You are no longer in charge over your life, but you have surrendered this life to God. Praise the name of the living God. You, you are not fight, fighting for a way. You have already found him. Oh, is the way. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord there at home. You have found him. Oh, is the way. So you are walking on him. You are walking in him. You are not lost, but you are being found. And you are not struggling to walk there. Because not by power or by might, but by the spirit of the living God. You are walking there. And anything that comes, any argument, you cast it down. By casting down arguments, you church and saints, we overcome by casting out arguments, by pulling down. Number one, you pull down strongholds. You say, people in this line, this is how they operate. Let me give you for example. People in this community, this is how they do matters. Then you, you are born again. We together there. You are not of this world. The Bible says we have not been born according to this nature, but we are born into the nature of God. That's why the Bible says, let, let the same mind that was in Christ Jesus be in you. Some other versions say the same nature that was in Christ be in you. The nature, nature, nature. 
that nature be in you. That was in Christ. So we walk not according to the flesh. We don't fulfill the desire, but we fulfill, we walk according to the spirit. So it, you are surrendered to Christ. So, is whereby you cast, say, this argument, this stronghold, I render you powerless. I am not going to walk the way my father walked. I am going to walk the way Jesus walked. Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. And he says, if anybody preaches another gospel, praise the Lord, then the gospel of Christ, that man do not believe in. Praise the name of the living God. Remember, I'm bringing the point that how to keep yourself clean. We have washed ourselves. Now, it's how to keep, because many people, they become clean. They go back to that. Some people, they are struggling with immorality. They are repenting every now and then. They have not understood this as stronghold. It is in their lineage. So, it's something you must contend with in the spirit. Colonize it and Bring it, you, under the subject of the Holy Spirit. You need, it needs to be ruled by the power of the Holy Spirit. So we have seen that you pull down, number one. Anything you are pulling down, it's not something that was, as is coming down willingly. Something you are content with. Number two, you see, you cast down argument. This thing, should I marry this non-believer or should I look for a born again? That argument, put down. The Bible says, do not be yoked together with non-believers, period. Don't be yoked together. Don't say, I'm looking to reach him out. I'm looking for him to come to Jesus. He has promised he will come to Jesus after marriage. No. If you have really surrendered your life to Christ, marriage is not the elementary factor. The elementary factor is fulfilling the desire of him who called him. And the Bible says he is able to do exceedingly a burial above what you can think. And the Bible says every good gift and perfect one comes from him, the father of life. So he's able to give you a gift if you believe. If you surrender yourself to him, he will give you the best gift. If he's a husband, he will give you the best gift. If he's a wife, he will give you the best gift. He will not give you this or karakara people are having nowadays. Which last two years, three years, and it is over. You start a new one again. You go the same series because it's not a gift of God. Whenever the Bible says the blessings of God make one rich and they do not add sorrow. Many people, they are crying with things they have. Where that they gave a testimony in church, it is God. It is not God. Go and do a thorough investigation. Ishmael was a child, a living boy. He was born by the physical nature which, 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 which are, are financed, by, are empowered by the economy of Zion. That is God. But God said he's not the child of promise. And uh, until Isaac came, many people, they are living with their sons from anger. They are not living with the things of God. They are living with the things according to the plan of man. And whenever the plan of man is, there is no God. And God is taken out when men go their plan. And the devil will want you to go to your plan. Instead of surrendering your life to Jesus. I pray for you today in Christ's name. That to be empowered by this knowledge. To surrender totally to the ancient of days. Praise the name of the living God. Church. Let's move forward a bit. So we have seen you cast down. And every I thing that exhort itself above the knowledge of God. There are things which exalt themselves above the knowledge of God. There are things that say, this one, you don't need to recheck the Bible. You don't need to check what God is saying. This is a direct. It's something exalting itself above God. And these things are, they easily trap men. Praise the name of a living God. And by bring every thought into captivity to obey Christ. If you are looking to keep your garment clean, brethren, you have to bring every thought to captivity. Your mind must be a slave. And everybody must be a slave. And everybody is a slave. What matters are the masters you are serving. Some are serving ancient of days. Others are serving the enemy. 
Remember the Bible says there are two masters. God or mammons. God or mammons. Praise the name of a living God, people. I want to pray with you in the next five minutes. If you are not born again, you can give your life to Jesus. If you backslid, you can rededicate your life to Jesus. I'm going to lead you to that prayer. Then I'm going to pray for the others. You can just close your eyes and be, if you are dirty, you can tell God, I surrender my garments to you. I wish and I end a worship team here to sing as I worship. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. That takes away the sin of the world. Oh, come and cleanse us. Come and cleanse us, Jesus. Come and cleanse the church. There are people there at home which are broken. Father, they have come to complete knowledge while they are living with dirty garments. Others are not understanding why Satan has been standing beside them every day. In the time of prayer, he's standing there. In the time of charge, he's standing there. They have tried to chase him, but he can't go. Now they know. Father, we thank you for this JTV platform. May this platform be blessed. May the management of this platform be blessed in Jesus' name. Let grace abide upon your servant, Apostle Pamela B. Lord, and the entire media crew, bless them in Jesus' name. Let the wisdom of the Spirit rest upon them greatly. Let your hand overshadow them, Elohim. I bless you. I honor you. If you have not given your life to Jesus, will you mind to repeat after me? Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I give you my life. Jesus, I confess, you died and rose again. Write my name in the book of life and delete from the book of death. Today, I'm saved. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Those who have lived in sin, you are born again, but you have lived in sin. You can just repeat after me, Lord Jesus. I've lived a life of sin. I plead for mercy. Father, the Bible says your mercy is unfailing. Tender- you have tender mercies. And your love is unfailing. Let your love reach me greatly. Let your tender mercies be upon me greatly today. I bless you, mighty Father. I bless you, mighty God. Oh, precious Master. Oh, precious Lord. I pray for your mercy and repent on the behalf of our nation. Father, we have exalted things instead of exalting you. We have brought ideologies that are above you. Father, we arrest them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And bring them by our feet and we lift you higher in this country. Elohim be lifted. Elohim be magnified. Elohim be exalted and remember our nation. Lord, I pray for my viewers wherever they are viewing this broadcast. Let your hand locate them greatly in Jesus' name. And let them have a divine visitation that will turn their lives around that your name will be glorified. Father, those who are sick, let them begin to receive healing as they repent, as they confess their sins to you. Father, we have read your body your word and the Bible says, if you confess, you are faithful. Father, they are confessing. Forgive them. In the mighty name of Jesus. Those who need to go to a man and confess their sin, talk to them concerning what they have done. Father, lead them by the Holy Spirit where they ought to go. We lift you, my Father, and we honor your name. Oh God, have mercy upon the church of Kenya. Have mercy upon the church in this country. Oh Redeemer, remember your servants. We repent the sin of the servants. We repent the sins of the ministers. We repent the sins of the bishop, the apostles, the reverend, the sin of the evangelists, the sin of everybody that is serving you in the house. Lord, we plead for mercy. And we plead for your blood to speak today on our lives. Oh God, show us mercy, Redeemer. Show us mercy. Have mercy upon Upon us, Lord, have mercy upon us, oh God Almighty. Remember us today because you're a good God. I pray that you may reign your grace. I pray that you may reign your grace. Lord, remember these viewers. Some are going through added time, some are experiencing the most difficult time in their life. For Father, we have heard that here that only you could have sustained them, only you could have rescued us. 
Father, there are people that are droning economically. Others are droning military. Others are droning in the youth. Others are droning sexual immorality. Others are droning into evil things. Father, remember them, I pray. I pray for the sick, the one who has a back problem. Lord, I minister healing to them in Jesus' name. The one who has a sight issue, my Lord, and is believing you. I speak healing to their lives in the name of Jesus. Oh, precious Redeemer, Lord of glory, the everlasting Father. Oh, loved us when you are still a sinner. Oh, come and die for us when you are still lost. Lord, I pray that you may remember this viewer. I bless you and I honor you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we pray. My name's I'm Bishop Gabriel Wisdom of Shiloh Worship Ministries, Nairobi. Our church is located at Mother North. We are at Area 2. We are direct opposite driving primary school or GSU quarters. Uh, if you drive along that road, you're able to see our church is along the highway. You are welcome there. We have services. We have services. We have services. Today we have a service. On Sunday, we have services uh, that start at 9 to 11. And then we have a service that starts at 11.30. Though this service, we are having one service called celebration service. And the coming service still have one service called testimony service, which runs from 10 to 1. You are very much welcome. My number, if you want my number, you can communicate to me. My number is 0723-744-765. You can get me on my mobile phone number, which is 0723-744-765. And God of grace will bless you. You can go to YouTube. You can get me on YouTube at Bishop Gabriel Wisdom. You can get me on Facebook at Bishop Wisdom or Bishop Gabriel Wisdom or Sheila Worship Ministry. All this platform you are able to get me. And God of grace bless you. Shalom, shalom. We bless God for today. Amen and amen. JTV, your number one Christian channel.